Good afternoon, and welcome to Friday Afternoon on Bad Dog Comedy TV, live on YouTube, and Stories with B. Now please welcome your host, B. Bertrand. Hi friends, I hope you're having a nice day today. Welcome back to another episode of Stories with B. Um, I have this rad weekly show, uh, weekly show on Bad Dog Theater's YouTube channel because at the beginning of quarantine, a um, little backstory, I've always kept all of my kids' books growing up. And at the beginning of quarantine, everything was kind of sad and kind of bleak and I was trying to figure out something wholesome and kind I could do. Uh, so I just started reading a bedtime story a night to people and it became this lovely little community of people just being kind. And so here we are on Fridays uh, with Stories with B. I'm really excited for this episode because it's a back to school episode. A lot of people were going back to school this week, kids and adults and teachers, um, and a lot of people are going next week. And I know there's a lot of anxiety and excitement. So I thought we could have a really lovely uh, chat with two people. Uh, one is a new friend and one is a friend that I've had for a bit. And I'm very excited to get them all together and chat because they're both in the arts and both of them also have worked at bookstores before. So everyone, please welcome uh, Miranda Warner and Liz Johnson. Hello. Hi friends. Hi. How's it going? Good, I'm doing well. How are you doing, friend? I'm well, thank you, friend. This is really lovely. I'm so excited that you both decided to do this. And I'd like to start off with my special little greeting um, when I say to everyone uh, that I hope everyone's having a nice day and they're safe and warm and cozy and they have all their special things. And I hope you have your special drinks, friends. I do. Special drink. What are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking vanilla Coke with mint in it that's not really doing anything but it looks pretty <laughs> very fancy um i'm having a cup of tea but i put milk and sugar in it which is i only do that for special occasions or when i'm feeling sad oh that's really sweet <laughs> but i'm not feeling sad now <laughs> um if you don't mind if we start liz um why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself oh my gosh <laughs> okay what to say wow I should tell the world that I'm sitting on my bed. <laughs> so if the camera goes wild, that's why. That's a bit about me. What else? Uh, I'm an improviser and I live in Toronto and I've lived in Toronto my whole life, except for a brief period of time when I lived in Halifax. And um, what else? I love comedy and I love children's books. And just like you, B, I've kept a lot of children's books from when I was little and uh, I worked at a children's bookstore called Maple Stables Bookstore um, for a long time, for about five years. And I got to meet so many amazing authors and read so many amazing books. And I loved them. And I was sad that I had to leave the bookstore. So it's so nice to get to come and talk about books. That's lovely. Um, and Miranda, what about you? Um, hello, uh, my name is Miranda. I am a Toronto-based uh, nightlife performer. It's probably the easiest way to explain that. Uh, although I'm currently just pandemic living now, I guess would be the way to do that. Uh, and my related book experience is um, from about 2002 to 2012, I worked at and was the manager of Casablanca Bookshop, which was a used bookstore in downtown Kitchener. That's very cool. And both of you, um, mm -hmm. I found out, ended up leaving working in a bookstore to go into the arts, which is very cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's true. It got uh, hard to, I don't know about you, Miranda, it got really hard to be able to, to try to manage a store and perform all the time. It's tiring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was actually in a really lucky situation with my store because um, towards the end of my time there, I had started working in burlesque and I had this lovely little neighborhood where, where I lived. I was two blocks away from the bookstore and I was also two blocks away from the venue we performed in. So it was actually this perfect little like intersection of all of the things I need in one place. Uh, but then just the bookstore got to a point where uh, it needed... Out of the landlords were just doing what landlords do. and the owner was like, look, you can buy my store. And I was like, that would be great, but I can also go to clown school. Um, so that's how that story ended was, yeah, he ended up just uh, closing the store, which had been open for about a little over 25 years at that point. Uh, so we'd had a good run and we both just needed to do other things 
at that point. And so off we went. It's nice when it's a choice though, I think. Yeah. When yeah. Like, okay, I've, I've chosen, I'm at the end of it and I'm, as opposed to having to mm -hmm. close it. That's yeah. I used to live yeah. at Mount Pleasant in Davisville and I walked past Mabel's Fables all the time. I went in a few times and I always just ah. thought it looked like the coziest, sweetest little store. It's mm -hmm. very cozy. It's so wonderful. We have a cat named Mabel. At the moment, it's Mabel the third. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, yeah, it's been in business. We had our 30th anniversary two years ago now. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Um, that's wild. And it's, yeah, it's one of the longest running children's bookstores around. So very cool. cool. Um, do, you yeah. do you guys have uh, any specific um, fond memories of when you were working at bookstores and just with back to school specifically? With back to school specifically, it's always like a time of summer. I find it's like, very much in secondhand bookstores because teachers have to buy a lot of their own supplies is you can like you can tell who a teacher is shopping for their classroom because of like the interest and intent that they put into getting like they have such a small budget sometimes they have a 20 dollars budget to buy a classroom's worth of books and it's like 20 dollars out of their own pocket usually yeah. um so that's where like a lot of them come to secondhand stores and are just like okay i need things to be like educational or informative to an extent and like what's the most bang for my buck i can get in terms of this um yeah teachers are great customers though and it's nice to see them they are the best i should i'll do a plug for mabel's <laughs> <laughs> there's a teacher discount 20 percent off for the store for teachers and then higher discounts if you buy in bulk go to mabel'smabels.com <laughs> But um, yes, uh, it's a, yeah, I totally agree. Teachers come in and they really need amazing books. They need books that they can read to their classroom or that they can help uh, support their teaching or anything that it is. And so they're really wonderful customers. I agree. I, that was, that's probably my big thought about back to school was teachers are going to come in. One thing I think I'll talk about the importance of bookstores is that teachers can not be expected to read the 55 books that came out you know, between mm -hmm. the winter into the summer for what they want to teach in their classrooms. So bookstores are so helpful because we get to you have this whole other group of people who are reading and learning about it and talking to the publishers and they can say, oh, okay, you want to teach a class on, you know, I'll pick your point in history or geography or whatever and you want to have a book to go with it. We were often able to facilitate that because we had so many other people reading books, which was so that's what I think about a lot for back to school. That and cool pencils. <laughs> we sold a lot of True. really cool pens and pencils. And that was always the thing. So we used to do book fairs when I worked. And um, book fairs were very fun. But there was a rule where you could only buy a pencil or a pen or like a gamey type thing or a fun bookmark if you bought a book. <laughs> because <laughs> lots of kids would spend their small amount of money on the the accessories. Accessories. So. Fair. Um, Miranda, <laughs> since you worked, that's very cute. Uh, since you worked at a secondhand bookstore, do you have more access to more like diverse things that maybe you wouldn't find in stores that weren't secondhand stores? It's it's sort of a mix because the thing with secondhand is that most of your stock like depends on other people selling you stuff. Yeah. And that's where, like, speaking about, like, children's books in particular is, like, both of you are strong examples of you hang on to your kids' books. So, like, a lot of certain classics are, can be really hard to find because people keep on to them or by the time they're willing to get rid of them, they're in, especially, with, like, with kids' books, they'll be in such, like, rough condition that you can't resell them and so yeah. that you can pass right. them on. But as you end up, you can find kids books is different too because it's like i'm sure you know from working at mabel's fables where it's displaying <coughs> kids books in a manner where it's not just like endless feet of tiny centimeter thick spines <laughs> yeah they have to be displayed flat like that where um but second hand you're also trying to cram a lot of stuff in so it's like you have to be really committed to looking sometimes especially when you're getting through like picture books and books for younger readers because it's just it's impossible to display the volume you want. Like the most popular titles are gonna fly out with a day, but you can like, you just have to, 
it's like any secondhand book buyer is that you're usually there not just for fiscal reasons, but you enjoy digging through like shelves of books. Yeah. And you want to spend like yeah. 15 minutes to find like two or three books that you want to go. It's also so good. There's a, there's a bookstore around the street from where I live called Doug Miller Books. He's been there forever on mm -hmm. board. And you go in and you're like, and he's his wall to ceiling, used books everywhere. But if you go in, you're like, you have this one? He'll be like, no. <laughs> he knows, yeah. right away. Or yeah, let me let me dig through whatever and he'll help you find it, which is so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is cool. Mm -hmm. What do either of you think makes like a good book for a kid? I know that's probably a really wide question, but I was thinking about both of you working at bookstores and I know it was a little bit ago, but it's interesting mm -hmm. to think of what is like the big thing that kids are into and stuff. And you must have come across a lot of books, educational and like more mainstream and stuff. So is there any books that you really enjoyed because maybe there was like some sort of lesson or heartwarming thing or like, you know, it's too wide, isn't it? There's so many. Um, I don't know, Miranda, do you have a... I don't, yeah, that's like, that's a really broad question, especially because like every kid is different and their needs and experiences yeah. are different. Um, yeah. The one that comes to mind that like impacted me as an educational tool was the Little House in the Prairie series, mm, which really? might seem like, yeah. And I think it's this weird, I know something I learned book selling is that there's definitely people there are like a few scenes that happen in there that like wouldn't fly today. Uh, and I thought it was funny, like talking to customers repeatedly. I had like, a, I had an offended mother once who was trying to sell me a little house in the prairie set and like wanted a lot more money than I could give her. But was like, I would never let my kid read this because of this scene where a pig is killed. That's right. And I had to think right? so hard. Yeah, it's really early on. And I'm just like, but it's a weird, like the girl, like you hear about her like hiding in her room and like, here's the pig in the distance. And I'm like, yeah, but that's how food works is my thing. I mean, like she can put yeah. her child however she wants, but I thought that was such a weird, like I never considered that. Um, but I think like I learned a lot more from those books and even the TV series. Cause you just like, you hear these stories of like sufficiency and like families taking care of each other and I remember sort of like the gifts they would make for each other out of like low resources and stuff like that. Um, that one sticks with me as one that was like more educational in hindsight than I realized it was. Oh, and honest too. That's very cool. Yeah. David read this. I think that, that, yeah, there's a book called Wild Things, which was written about children's literature. I don't know, so it's up there. By Bruce Candy. And uh, it's, about children's literature and important authors and Ingold Wilder is one of them for that exact reason that it's like, oh, you're getting an actual look at this lifestyle uh, that's yeah. realistic. And we had a big thing at Mabel's. I think this is one thing that makes a good book that is you can experience these things like this pig being killed uh, in a, when you're reading it, it's a much safer way to encounter something for the first time for whatever you're reading. Well, it, you know, if it's traumatic or if it's scary or anything, if you're reading it in a book, you're experiencing it through your own imagination and lens and focus. And so we always said, if you're going to experience something, best to do it in a book for the first time. And then you can talk about it with whoever you want. And it, as opposed to having it kind of, you know, boom, here's the photo or here, like those things get yeah. seeped in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, in a book, you can kind of manage it yourself. So that's something I think that is important. I think for children's books, the things that I think are really, really important are, um, I think if you're a little kid, I cannot say enough about rhyme. I'm obsessed with books that rhyme, that have rhythm, um, because when you're reading it, you see like the, the lyricism of a book is so important that it helps the kids understand it better and engage with it more. Illustrations are so important doing magical stuff on the other them when it when a book has here one moment please please this was one of my favorite books of all time do you guys remember the balloon tree no i never i no. never read the balloon I've tree i never read that one mm -hmm. balloon tree is one of my favorite books ever phoebe gilman is the author she was a canadian author she wrote all kinds of books she wrote the jillian big series if you're familiar with that one mm -hmm. she wrote a lot a lot a lot of books anyway she did these wildly stunning illustrations that had all of these little pieces around either side of everything and she did these kind of beautiful big 
um, colorful illustrations. But within the books, there were these magical moments where you could spot, for example, if you were reading a Jillian Jiggs book, on the on the side of her wall in Julian Jiggs's room would be the painting from this book, um, mm. and so it was almost like once you started reading the books, you could find details from the other books throughout. So it was this whole other layer of exploration and kind of excitement. So I love that stuff. These guys, the Fan Brothers. Oh my God, I'm not I'm failing. Oh, this this is my last one. I promise. They're also <laughs> the oh, Fan I like Brothers. that are so fabulous, they're so wonderful, and they do similar things where if you look really carefully in their illustrations, you see details that you would never uh, never know unless you were really paying attention and reading it over and over again. So it, it gives you something each time you read it, which I love. Love that the thing. Lovely. Anyway. We'll have to make it important. <laughs> Um, maybe after we can, you can message me um, the list of those books and I can post it. They seem great. Yeah. I wish I had so much longer to talk to you both, but we have to say goodbye mm -hmm. for now. But I would, I really appreciate you both being on. And uh, Liz, do you want to start? Well, where can we follow you? Oh, yes. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> I'm on, I guess I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Liz Johnston 12. Don't know why. 12. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of shows with Bad Dog Theater. So keep tuning in to Bad Dog TV because I'll be in hookup next week as well. Yep. And please. <laughs> If you're thinking of buying a book in the city, go to an independent bookstore. Mabel's Fables is amazing. You can order online. I love them to death, but there's so many amazing bookstores. Go to a different book list. Go to another book. You know, there's a lot. Another story, blah, blah, blah. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. What about you, Miranda? Um, you can find me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Under most platforms for my personal stuff, I'm under MX Quest. And then you can also find my production company under Clowns Kill Empires. And we're producing a digital monthly of international performers of ridiculousness on the first Monday of every month. So our next show is October 5th and it's called Clowns Kill Empires Presents Animal Farm, which is going to be our celebration of all of the wonderful pets and puppets that have taken over our online content this year. Cool. I can't wait to see it. Uh, yeah. Thank you both for hanging out. Uh, I hope you both have a lovely day today. And whatever type of day you have, you did your best. And your best is more than good enough. And I am proud of you. And I appreciate you. And I love you. And thank you so much for doing this with me. Thank, thank you. you for having well, me. This is such a delight. So wonderful. This is definitely a delight. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll talk to you both soon. Bye, friends. All right, friends, buckle up, because I just got this book the other day from um, Value Village, and I had never heard of it, but I thought it was super cute. Uh, so I bought it, and I read it a few days ago, and it's really appropriate for back to school, and it's super cute. So buckle up, friends. Let's get into The Kissing Hand. I hope that my light isn't too distracting on here. Oh, and somebody put a lot of stickers throughout this book, so be prepared. All right. The kissing hand. How cute is this sweet little raccoon? Oh my goodness. Okay. Chester Raccoon stood at the edge of the forest and cried. I don't want to go to school, he told his mother. I want to stay home with you. I want to play with my friends and play with my toys and read my books and swing on my swing. Please may I stay home with you? How could anyone say no to that sweet little weepy face? Mrs. Raccoon took Chester by the hand and nuzzled him on the ear. Sometimes we all have to do things we don't want to do, she told him gently, even if they seem strange and scary at first, but you will love school once you start. You'll make new friends and play with new toys, read new books and swing on new swings. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret that will make your nights at school seem as warm and cozy as your days at home. Chester wiped away his tears and looked interested. A secret? What kind of secret? A very old secret, said Mrs. Raccoon. I learned it from my mother, and she learned it from hers. It's called the kissing hand. The kissing hand, asked Chester. What's that? I'll show you, Mrs. Ra I'll show you. Mrs. Raccoon took Chester's left hand and spread open his tiny fingers into a fan. Leaning forward, she kissed Chester right in the middle of his palm. Chester felt his mother's kiss rush from his hand, up his arm, and into his heart. 
I love that. Even his silky black mask tingled with a special warmth. Mrs. Raccoon smiled. Now she told Chester, when you feel lonely and need a little loving from home, just press your hand to your cheek and think, mommy loves you, mommy loves you. And that very kiss will jump to your face and fill you with toasty warm thoughts. She took Chester's hand and carefully wrapped his fingers around the kiss. Now do be careful not to lose it, she teased him. But don't worry, when you open your hand and wash your food, I promise the kiss will stick. Chester loved his kissing hand. Now he knew his mother's love would go with him wherever he went, even to school. Look at him, so brave, going to school. That night, Chester stood in front of his school and looked thoughtful. Suddenly, he turned to his mother and grinned. Give me your hand, he told her. Chester took his mother's hand in his own and unfolded her large, familiar fingers into a fan. Next, he leaned forward and kissed the center of her hand. So sweet. Now you have a kissing hand too, he told her. And with a gentle goodbye and I love you, Chester turned and danced away. Mrs. Raccoon watched Chester scamper across a tree limb and enter school. And as the hoot owl rang in the new school year, she pressed her left hand to her cheek and smiled. The warmth of Chester's kiss filled her heart with special words. Chester loves you, it sang. Chester loves you. Oh, and that's their cute little class with Mrs. Owl, with their little teacher. I think that's it, friends. And then there's the kissing hand with the sticker on it. I hope you like the kissing hand. Um, for everybody going back to school, teachers, you are angels. My mom's a teacher, and I know you must be super overwhelmed, and everything is a lot. But I'm very proud of you, and it's going to be okay. Um, and kids and adults going back to school, um, it's it's a weird time, and it's okay to have you know anxious feelings and be feeling kind of weird about everything. But it's also exciting and. We all just have to do our best to keep safe and everything's going to be okay. We'll get through it. And uh, friends, thanks for hanging out with me today. Let's keep having tough conversations and wearing our masks and drinking our water and being gentle with ourselves. Um, I hope you all have a great day today. Whatever type of day you had, you did your best and your best is more than good enough. And I'm real proud of you and I appreciate you and I love you. And I hope that you have a wonderful time going to school and a wonderful weekend for people who aren't going to school. And uh, please make sure if you can, right below here, uh, there's a donation link. If you can donate to Bad Dog, um, everybody works so hard and there's so many people behind putting out these shows of this really great content. And if you're able to donate a bit of money, that would be really lovely and really go a long way. Uh, I'd love to thank Bad Dog. I'd love to thank Sean, our tech, and Coco. And uh, I'd love to thank Miranda and Liz. This was really lovely, and I appreciate you all. We're back here next Friday at 4.30. Uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Take care. I'll see you next time.